listen brother i love all of all of these dudes who i'm talking about as men but when you talk about a character 95 percent of people who rap about having somebody have never nobody bro right so that's what i'm so telling they you all respect no they're not all characters some of them are mascots some of them are part of the team just not on the court she was in the future in, in the studio with future and she was mad at him because future looked at her and said nikki it's crazy that people think i do all these hard and everything just because i be rapping about you know doing them but in real life i'm a lightweight i don't do that stuff Word. Of a, you know how Juice World? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he ain't get. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know who he said inspired him to start doing. Go ahead, see, you just, there you go. But but he, here's the and let's deal with these seven. And, and it's different if if it's like but if, if Future is like yo, but I'm really living like that. But Future is telling. Well, well let's deal not, let's I'm deal not. with them separately because again context is important. Where I come from. And me and Nicki Minaj are not dating or not nothing. She married. Y'all better not be dating. Yeah, so Jeremy. so what I look like telling her I'm on all these shows, if I am on them. It, it's my job to tell her, I don't really get out like that. Like, I nah, them tripping. I don't really get out like that. So Probably why she want to know my together. business that I'm straight out on low and I ain't telling her that? If I'm straight out on lean and all this, this Nicki Minaj, I ain't telling her that. I don't want to concede to the rapping about because I'm still waiting on the example of smoking on such and such because I don't know of any big rapper that's blatantly coming out saying smoking on such and such that doesn't happen. So does it mean what that what happens it? is is the subculture of of rap where these guys are doing this drilling thing that's trying to break into rap. But I don't know of any mainstream artist that's right now today coming out saying smoking on such and such. But 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 what they are doing, Loon is mainstream artists that are huge that are still glorifying in their music absolutely they might not be saying the smoking stuff so when can happen in self-defense so for the past few months there's been all of this talk about oh d1 you know calling uh d1 went on sway's show on, on sway in the morning and calling out uh you know choosing to single out different rappers why did you choose to single them out for those of y'all who don't know what we're talking about, D1 went on Sway in the morning and called out Meek Mill, Jim Jones, Rick Ross, and said we can do better. That's it. That they are uh, positioning themselves as glorifying. I can't wait to give Jim Jones a big old hug, bro. I can't wait like to hug him as, as my fellow brother. You know what I'm saying? Both children of God. I can't wait to give Ross and Meek and Joe Budden But hugs, why would they want to hug you? But you reprimand me in the public. I don't hug those that reprimand. Yeah. Nah, I don't reprimand this no man. Business. That ain't my place. But this is business. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what they would argue, that they want your place to do that. So so, so guess what? So if that's something to where it's, it's, it's seen, because me, I don't have malicious intentions, bro. I absolutely don't. I gain nothing from saying, yeah, I was able to um, say something about another person on a public platform. I gain nothing from that. What, what would you say to people who say you weaponized the word? When Joe Budden first brought my name up on his podcast, um, they called me a podcaster from New Orleans, right? <laughs> Who's clout chasing and trying to get on by naming other rappers. That's no journalistic integrity. That is like, man, that's, that's you just exposed yourself. You heard me? Now niggas wanna loom me to death. Salute loom. Yeah, exactly. It's my man loom. That's yeah, my man too. Both looms. Old loom, new loom, both <laughs> oh, Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, All ops must know it's up there and it's stuck there, nigga. When it's up there, man, it's stuck there. Shut up. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the fantasy sports platform that's changing the game for people like us. With Prize Picks, you can test your knowledge with picking over and under for your favorite player stats across a wide variety of sports. Think football, baseball, basketball, and beyond. So why wait? Jump into Prize Picks right now and bring more excitement to game day. Whether you're cheering from the stands or the couch, Prize Picks adds that extra layer of fun for sports excitement. Again, my slogan, why would you put something on the game when you could put something on the name? Let's get into those picks and start winning with prize picks today. IUTP code. Let's get back to the show.
Yo, 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 welcome to It's Up There Podcast. I am your active and attractive host, Big Loon, for another episode of the Fashion Growing Podcast in the market right now. Vibration high on this side every single time. If you are watching this, I would advise you to head to patreon.com. That's where the vibes are. Salute to all my people on Patreon. Y'all keep this thing afloat. Um, <clears throat> For those of y'all know me, Y'all know I don't like to talk to everybody. I'm not available or willing to speak with everyone, but there's people in this culture that I believe we need to share the stage with in order in order for us to build. Um, today we got someone that's been making waves in this industry, stands on principle, stands on what he believes in. Today we're gonna have a really, really, really monumental conversation with D1. What's going on, my brother? What's good? Just chilling, bro. How you? Appreciate you for having me. I heard you say active and attractive, yes, brother. Sir. So, so you, you 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 just you just you just jump out there like that. I just how you know the people think you attractive? They don't bro? got to. They don't matter. You know what I it's self interest. It's self interest. Yeah, yeah, it's huh? self interest, bro. Like you got to believe it to achieve it. They believe told me that. that when I was little. Believe that. I yeah, feel that. Nah, yeah. I, all jokes aside, brother, I'm happy to be here. Appreciate that, brother. Yeah. Appreciate that. We gonna we gonna build, man. You've been someone that I've watched from afar. Mm. Um, did a lot in this game. Tell me, you was telling me about you You teach. For people who don't know you that may run across this video uh, for whatever reason, explain to them who you are and what you do. Yeah, bro, so I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. I graduated college two months before graduation. I was a victim of an armed robbery, a really well-known uh, person in the city of Baton Rouge. Um, it was a it was a misunderstanding, something I totally wasn't a part of, and some of their homies came, ran up on me and my partner, put a gun in my head thinking we, you know, broke into uh, one of their cars type stuff. So I'm sitting there with a gun on my temple mm -hmm. thinking my life about to end, like for real, for real. And <clears throat> I made it through that ordeal by the grace of God, but that totally shook me up. I, I don't know how long I got here in a real way. So mm -hmm. I gotta make my life count. And I'm putting impact over income. You heard me? Mm. That became the motto. Impact over income, straight up. So that, that led me to want to make impact with the youth. You heard me? I became a middle school teacher, fresh out of graduating. I got a business degree and I got a business mind, but I got a heart for the youth. So I'm teaching middle school in Baton Rouge. I was a Fredo Bangs teacher. Shout out to Fredo. Yeah, I was a G Money's teacher. That's dope, rest in peace, yeah, G Money. Rest in peace, you know G Money. Uh, yeah, I taught at the same school, my man TC. I don't know if you know TC. Yeah, LaTeX. Yeah, yeah. LaTeX, yeah, my man Joe Scott. Like, it was so much talent in that school at that time, and nobody would have known, you know, what that was all gonna blossom into, but I'm a lot of these dudes teachers. So I'm doing that, teaching by day, rap hustling by night. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm Clark Cannon Superman. As soon as I get out the, the classroom being a math and a life skills teacher, I'm in the clubs. I'm with Boosie, I'm with Kevin Gates, I'm in Baton Rouge, and although my music is different, and I'm more on some J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, Nas, if Nas was a hot boy, you know, type of, <laughs> type of yeah. vibe, it's like, I'm in the same spots that they in, because that's the only scene to really come up in, you know? I'm, I'm, I'm in the club, I'm crossing paths with people like Nussie, you know what I mean? Yeah. Nussie, rest in peace. Yeah. Um, so this is happening at the time, bro. The rap career, I'm making a name for myself locally, but that's about it, you know what I'm saying, locally. So while I'm teaching, man, I'm seeing how much my students, they getting Boosie fades, you heard me? So they coming in class, dressing like Boosie, they, they talking like Gates, you know what I mean? This in Baton Rouge at the time. Right. I'm seeing this happen, and the day that Nussie got I was supposed to do a song with him. It was gonna be on my debut album called David and Goliath, right? A song called I Hate Money, Nussie got my students ran in and told me that Nussie had got I'm like, man, what? I just was texting this dude, you know what I mean? So I ended up uh, putting Gates on the song instead, right? So me and Gates, uh, you know, basically same generation. So yeah. we knew each other and, and everything. And I believe Gates' girl, uh, Drika, I believe she went to LSU, where I graduated okay. from, right? So I think we had probably crossed paths, knew each other. So put Gates on the song. I put this album out independently and while I was putting my album together, man, two things happened. One of my students come in class one day with a tattoo, you heard me, on his arm, and the tattoo said M-O-B. You know M-O-B, money over, yeah. bam. So I look at him, I'm like, man, what made you get this tattoo, bro? You know what this stand for, right? He had no idea what it stood for. And I was like, well, why did you get it? 
He didn't know what the MOB stood for? He didn't know what MOB stood he for. Gonna, yeah, okay. But Lil Wayne got that tatted on his chest, and Lil Wayne was his favorite rapper, mm-hmm. you hear me? So, bro, I got goosebumps telling the story because it really clicked to me. Like, man, rap music is really impacting the youth. In addition to my best friend just got killed, you heard me? My boy Carl from New Orleans. So we grew up from in New Orleans. We wanted to be like the hot boys, right? The difference is we listening to them, we listening to No Limit Cash Money, but I got structure in my household that's making me afraid to bring that hot boy activity back home, you feel me? With somebody like Carl, same thing. He got loving parents and everything, but some people just, they wasn't afraid to all the way jump off the porch and start living their life, right? Not really like that, man. We went to magnet school, yeah. man. We went to magnet school. We were smart. You heard me? Yeah. We were smart. Um, we was studious. We, we was just fun-loving dudes. This man was in movies, commercials, all this. But I seen him start living that life. Carl got killed, right? Right after I graduated college. All of these things, Loon, made me say, bro, the impact that I want to make, I'm making it on a small scale in this classroom. But if I could have the same heart that I got as a teacher, but had a platform of a successful rapper, that would be a life worth living. So I was like, I'm going, now I'm going to jump off the porch metaphorically and get out there and try to pop this thing off. Never got paid for a show before. Never got paid for a feature. You heard me? Never made a dime off of music, giving out my mixtapes for free at the time. Living off my savings from making 39000 a year as a teacher. I taught for two years, and I jumped out there. Man, I'm going to take a chance on me. You heard me? If I ain't willing to jump out there behind my dreams, how can I expect anybody else to believe in me? Right. Jumped out there. About a year and a half, it was rough, you heard me, for about a year and a half. Then I put out a song that I wrote back when I was a teacher called J50 and Wheezy. Song where I'm addressing Jay-Z, 50 Cent, and Lil Wayne. This 2010 we talking about. But but that's why, I think that's what is interesting is that you, you have strong opinions about rappers mm. and rap, mm. but you are a rapper. There you go. Right. So So that makes some people uncomfortable. Right. But to me, that makes me qualified and authentic to have this opinion, because I do this. I do what y'all do. I know what it's like, you hear me? On right. every level, because I'm really an artist. Right. So I put J50 and Wheezy video out a year and a half after I shot the song. So if an artist is listening to this, when you make a song and you feel like, man, this one of them ones, even if it don't pop off when you first put it out, if you ain't shot no visual to it, if you ain't really put, you know, that, that yeah, that real push behind it, man, trust your gut, man. Don't give up on that song. Yeah. Put that video out. Within a week, that was my first experience going viral on YouTube. Within a week, Universal Records, Sylvia Rohn calling my phone, um, uh, Grand Hustle, Jason Jeter calling my phone, wanting to manage me. People, my life changed. I'm on right. MTV Jams. You heard me? That's dope. Not That's not, dope. not a local rapper. Right. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you did that, was that your big? Do you think that was a big break? What's your big break looking over your career? What What would you say your big? It's break multiple. Was? The first big break was. Being in New Orleans, in a place that's known for murder and Mardi Gras, but being like, man, I'm standing on, I'm standing on kingdom business, you heard me? I'm going to be here, I'm going to be cool with everybody in this rap scene, but I'm not finna fall into the trap that the industry set for us and keep glorifying killing our people and glorifying selling Do you think it's glorifying or do you think it's documenting? So there's a difference between narration and glorification. Right. I'm very well versed on what narration is because that's what some of my favorite rappers do. That's what Nas does very well in my opinion. Narrating what it's like growing up in the streets, growing up in the hood, and what you saw and what you were exposed to and the impact that had on you. Glorification is first person. I'm holding the gun, you heard me? And I'm finna walk down on you. I'm finna, I'm finna. Well, narration can be from first person. Narration should be from first person. Yeah, so when when you say that the, right, so when you say glorification is from first person, I would say narration comes from first person. So they both come from first person, but the difference is glorification is making it like, yo, this is something I want to do, and this is something that I'm, I'm celebrating what I'm about to do. I'm bragging on this. I'm treating this like this a victory. I'm, t- I'm not talking about anybody I shot with remorse. I'm not sitting here saying, damn, man. I got caught up and I was paranoid, I was nervous, I was fearing for my life and I had to do this or whatever. It's sitting here like, man, I killed you and I'm bragging about it. I'm smoking on you right now. That's glorification. That's I don't what know if, who, what big rappers do that though. 
What big rap, bro? You gotta be kidding no, me, bro. What big rappers? What big rappers? They, they say I'm smoking on. No, 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 no. Specifically, I'm smoking on such and such. Man, what, bro? I know big is be, relative. I know you're not being serious right now. No, bro. I'm being hundred percent. I know serious. you're not being serious. I'm being hundred right percent. Name some. I'm waiting on you. Give me some examples. Come on, bro. What what big rappers? Don't glorify No, murder. no, no. How about Again, that? you moving the goalposts. I'm telling you, give me smoking on such and such from okay. a big rock. Now, now, keep in mind, if we want to get technical, saying I'm smoking on this pack and well, all that. Well, we got to deal with these new, things technically. That, no, I'm saying that that's, that's new slang and terminology in the culture. Right. When I was growing up, when we, when we was first coming up, it wasn't talking about it like that. But look at who I listen to, the hot boys. And I love Turk. Turk is my man. You heard me? Juvenile is my man. We got songs together. You heard me? Manny Fresh is my brother in real life. I almost signed to YMCMB. I done dealt with Baby and Slim before. You know what I mean? Them dudes them like literally showed me real love. Right. With all that being said, me and Wayne never directly dealt with each other, but that, that was the biggest influence on me growing up was Lil Wayne. You feel me? The biggest influence. BG. I'm happy BG home. I would argue Wayne is a character. Bro. Listen, brother, I love all of, all of these dudes who I'm talking about as men, but when you talk about a character, 95% of people who rap about having killed somebody have never killed nobody, bro. Right, so that's what I'm so telling you is perspective. No, they're not all characters. Some of them are mascots. Some of them are part of the team, just not on the court, right? If so, you're rapping about killing somebody and you never killed nobody, you a character. Well, I'm, well, again, I think people sometimes, I don't, I, I, I don't want to concede to the rapping about killing because I'm still waiting on the example of smoking on such and such. Because I don't know of any big rapper that's blatantly coming out saying smoking on such and such. That doesn't happen. So does it make, what that what happens it? is, is the subculture of, of rap where these guys are doing this drilling thing that's trying to break into rap. But they'll also stop that as soon as they get through and they're told to, if they're told to. Not saying they are told to, but I don't know of any mainstream artist that's right now today coming out saying smoking on such and such. But, but, but what they are doing, Loon, is mainstream artists that are huge that are still glorifying killing in their music. Absolutely. They might not be saying the smoking stuff. So when ki killing can happen in self-defense. But but it's not being put in that type of context like okay, give me some let's deal with examples because when we deal when we cast this wide net, we can move this thing around where we can't never corner the conversation. So I want to deal with something someone said that rubbed you in a way that said, I didn't appreciate that. Bro. So, for the past few months, there's been all of this talk about, oh, D1, you know, calling, uh, D1 went on Sway's show on, on Sway in the Morning and calling out, uh, you know, choosing to single out different rappers. Why did you choose to single them out? Do you have an issue with them? It's like, no, I don't have an issue and for with these rappers. For, for, for those of y'all who don't know what we're talking about, D1 went on Sway in the Morning and called out Meek Mill, Jim Jones, Rick Ross, and said we can do better. Jim Jones, you could do better, brother. I love you too much. I love you too much to not be honest with you. Rick Ross, you could do better, brother. Meek Mill, you could do better, brother. I love you too much not to be honest with you. Are you the face of prison reform? Cause I held, uh, are you the face of prison reform? Or are you sitting here on your new song with Ross talking about getting somebody murked and shot at the red light? Which one is it, bro? Which one is it, bro? Cause I did a shoe giveaway in my city and gave out 1,300 pairs of your shoes because they said reform underneath them. And I love that you partnered with, with a major shoe company and, and you out here pushing prison reform. But now I got to sit here like, man, this man glorifying getting people killed as of a week ago. Like, what are you doing, bro? Lil Snoop really got killed. That broke your heart. You wear him around your neck. What, why are you glorifying the same thing when my best friend got killed? That's it. That they are uh, positioning themselves as glorifying killing for, for people that don't have context. And when that happens, I'm like, I love these dudes in a genuine way. And people will say, well, if you love somebody, you wouldn't call them out uh, or, or you wouldn't bring light to this. My thing, my thing has been like, no, I genuinely do, bro. In my, in my suitcase over there, you heard me? Because I'm, I'm going to be flying out a little later. In my suitcase, I got Meek Mill's shoes in there. Like, that's what I hoop in is, is his, his Puma shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's, that's in there. Right. Man, I could quote you so many Rick Ross. And Meek, my guy. Jim that's Jones my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 
These are good dudes in so many ways. At this point, I'm sure everybody in the culture looks up to Rick Ross for his business acumen. Cause you look at it like, man, this dude, he ain't never went diamond or nothing like that, you know, as far as music sales, but he has built such an empire and right. has the, the boss aura right. about him that's like, that's admirable, you know what I'm saying? When you talk about a Jim Jones and you talk about, man, this brother is loved and revered by his community, by Harlem, you know what I'm saying? And just a dude that people know, like, man, Jim Jones, he's solid. People, people know that. People, people will tell you that left and right across the industry, right? So I'm not unaware of these things at all. So when I'm saying that, it's just like, man, I could have said 50 more people, honestly. But we got this thing in the culture to where if you're speaking a truth that's uncomfortable, then the culture will try to say, oh, you're wrong for how you expressed it, or, or they'll try to disqualify you from what you're saying on a technicality, because deep down, the culture, and when I'm talking about the culture, I'm talking about the media, I'm talking about the fans, the culture is uncomfortable with, damn, you're trying to challenge the status quo. And my thing is like, bro, we don't have to sit here and feel like we are prisoners of our persona, because I have been in the studio alone, I don't know if you had this experience. I've been in the studio with rappers where we talking like this, how me and you talk off the mic, and then the engineer pull a, and pull a turn track into up, something. and he go turn into a character in that booth, and he go kill 40 people in that verse, you hear me? And then he come back out the booth, and we get back to talking like everything normal. Right. But that music that he just made, when that go out there to the masses, millions of people are gonna consume that, bro. And we have been numbed and desensitized to where it's like, that ain't a problem. And if you're speaking on it, you either hating on that rapper well, see, my, or you're just a hater in general. Right, man. But, but my thing would be in that moment, and I'll give you some pushback on that, is that you being who you are, when he comes out and exhibits that, then it's time to check it then, right? It's not time to leave the studio and then feel a way about that, right? If I see a rapper go in there and exhibit a behavior that I seem to be phony, right? If I say, damn, he just went in there, that ain't how he was just, that ain't. I tell you what I've seen, and this is a very well-known rapper uh, that, that talks about killing all the time. I've seen them, every time they're around me, they're very respectful. They're never- You don't wanna say who? I don't wanna say who, because- Why you want me to name all these rappers? Because I don't then? stand on that. I don't, I don't, I know that this is entertainment. I look at these little niggas, dudes like entertainers. They not killers, cause I know killers. I come from this. So I, I look, I know these little dudes as mascots. So what's entertaining about glorifying killing our people? No, it's, it's, it's documenting the scenarios that they've quote unquote been through or seen happen. So I'm saying that when I see a rap dude, most rappers, I don't view them and say, yo, he, he was one, he was like me. He was one of the guys that had something going on where he from. I tend to think that this new crop of rappers maybe, but there was a wave where I think like, I'm just looking at rappers like, no, it's, this is entertainment. For me, in particular, I don't, I, don't, I don't digest it that way, but kids don't have that discernment. Thank you. Right, and so I understand that. But I, 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 wanna, I wanna back up and I wanna deal with some particulars because we talked about the 40, the, the 40 people that this rapper went in and killed mm -hmm. in the studio. Mm -hmm. I would say one, check that then, you being who you are. Mm -hmm. You're D1, mm -hmm. you got that voice and people respect you. Oh, watch this, by, by the way, when this happened, this is 13 years ago when I'm still local rapper D1. And, and so like the confidence that I exude at this point, Loon, is because I know I'm up, you heard me? I know I'm in this game, my spot right. solidified, I, all the success and all that. And that confidence, bro, that's something to where I recognize that when you're in a position where you don't have the leverage and you're desperate for a cosign from somebody, the last thing you're gonna do is be like, hey man, why are you in that line, you know, in, in, in your raps? So- But if you stand on principle, you won't. Well, back then I wasn't the man right. I am right but, now. And also, do we give rappers that same leeway? And when, I, when I'm saying is, they may be conforming in the moment, trying to get out of their scenario, mm. right? Meaning rapping about something that they may not live or they may not understand, trying to get out the scenario in the same instance that you were being quiet. But you kind of knew that this isn't cool what he's doing, but I gotta suppress that because I ain't, I don't have the confidence that I have now. Like Jay can talk about 
reprimanding rap and reprimanding drug dealing culture because it's like he is who he is. Mm. But coming up in it, I think he would find that more difficult. They, no, I agree with you. So we on the same page about this. We on different pages about a lot of stuff, but this, we on the same page. That's why the OGs and the elders should be held to a different standard than the Le Youngins that's just coming up. First of all, their prefrontal cortex is still forming in their brain. They're literally still becoming like complete, you know, mentally. Right. So how much do you judge somebody who's still just trying to like, like figure out who they are and figure out their identity? They're still dealing with trauma in real time. They might be dealing with finally making some money for the first time in life, as opposed to, uh, come on, man, we talking about OGs at this point. That's, that's, that's not something we should be uh, comfortable with. And so I have said that we have a lot of what we call OGs in our culture who are really DGs, disappointing grownups. That's what they are, brother. That's what they are. And we have to find a way. See, I'm starting to catch myself as I say things to where I D, if you say this, does it look like you have an issue with uh, specific people? And it's like, no, bro, I can't wait to give Jim Jones a big old hug, bro. I can't wait like to hug him as, as my fellow brother. You know what I'm saying? Both children of God. I can't wait to give Ross and Meek and Joe Budden But hugs, why would they want to hug you? Why would they? Because we are both children of God, man. No, but you reprimand me in the public. I don't hug reprimand? those that reprimand. Yeah. Nah, I don't reprimand this no man. Business, that ain't my place. But this is business. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what they would argue, that they want your place to do that. So so, so guess what? So if that's something to where it's, it's, it's seen, because me, I don't have malicious intentions, bro. I absolutely don't. I gain nothing from saying, yeah, I was able to um, say something about another person on a public platform. I gain nothing from that. There's a back end to all this stuff. That back end, that back end is something to where you gotta live with yourself at the end of the day. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the fantasy sports platform that's changing the game for people like us. With Prize Picks, you can test your knowledge with picking over and under for your favorite player stats across a wide variety of sports. Think football, baseball, basketball, and beyond. So why wait? Jump into Prize Picks right now and bring more excitement to game day. Whether you're cheering from the stands or the couch, Prize Picks adds that extra layer of fun for sports excitement. Again, my slogan, why would you put something on the game when you could put something on the name? Let's get into those picks and start winning with Prize Picks today. IUTP code. Let's get back to the show. And what I'm ultimately always trying to do, Loon, is serve God and make God proud. So this ain't David when I'm when I'm I'm here right now. You heard me? You're talking to D1. So David don't have this type of platform. D1 got this platform. Man, when I see artists do two things, bro. When I see artists who be on stage performing and they look like they're not into it. I'd be like, me and this person ain't cut from the same club. Cause that's such a blessing to have an opportunity to perform your music that took you so much to make and mix and master and market. And now you got people wanting to pay to watch you perform. You better get them people to show. Same thing when you can speak on a platform that's gonna be amplified, man. You gotta say some stuff that people really need to hear. And, and sometimes for me, I put pressure on myself to be like D, like, you got you to gotta speak some uncomfortable truths about this culture because if not, the industry has made it to where, man, we just going to have y'all singing and dancing right to the grave. You heard me? How can we cry when Young Dolph, Nipsey Hussle, Take Off, die due to murders, but we turn around and get in the car after attending the funeral and press play on music that's glorifying that same message that just had us crying because that person got See, killed. See, that's why I think we keep, we, we keep, I think we're disagreeing on the glorifying of the message because I can't, we still haven't identified any real time. I don't, Lord, give me something that, Lord, that we can actually definitively say that this. Who, who, who your favorite rapper? Who your Lil Baby. Five? Lil Baby, I fuck with Baby. Uh, right now this is a current, right? So I listen to really just, just really, baby. Fuck, uh, that's really about it for me. For real? Yeah. You don't listen to D One? 
And then I gotta get yeah, on D1. Yeah, come on, man. I gotta get on come D1. On, man. I gotta get on D1. I'm talking about like, you know, I'm a gangster. I'm gonna keep it real at all times. Word. So in my in my playlist, it may be, I know I got baby in there and mostly slow shit. Cause I don't listen to music. Honestly. I okay. listen to audio books all day long. That's all I do. Like to I'll, get the to get the knowledge. Right. Why a dude that's from this culture that didn't grow up in hip hop your whole life, for you to be in a space where you like, man. I don't listen to the same thing that poured into me for so long, but currently I don't listen to it. Why not? Because I, I'm I, first I was looking at the Super Bowl. Now I'm in the Super Bowl, so I'm in this industry, and I will, I, don't, I don't waste time with uh, being a part of the crowd. I'm actually on the field, so I got to contribute to the game now instead of just taking and listening to the music and being a consumer. I'm now pouring into the game instead of the game pouring into me. Okay. So I got enough from the game to be able to now pour into the game. So with that being said, we saying the same thing because it's hard for me to listen to a bunch of new music, you know what I mean? But we saying the same thing with different mindsets behind it. For me, it's because if I feel like I have outgrown the artists on a mental level that I enjoy listening to, I can still acknowledge your talent but I can also acknowledge like it's not feeding me the way David need to be fed mentally right. at this stage of my life. You right. know what I mean? So with that being said, bro, I just look at it like we got. So now I went from being a middle school teacher to being a college professor. You know, in addition, still a full time rapper, like just dropped my 11th album from the hood to Harvard. Y'all go yeah, get that out sure. right now. Go get that. But I'm teaching a college course at Tufts University called The Intersection of Hip Hop and Social Change. So now I'm teaching students about the role they play as consumers because you got way more fans than you got rappers in Facts. this world. And the consumers, if you really want to see something different, you have the power to say, we tired of hearing that glorified in our music. You know, you know who don't play? Homosexuals You keep and saying Jews. glorified though. What? Give me some examples of this glorification. Bro. And see, that's what I'm saying. We gotta be specific when Bro. we. And the reason, and let's get. Let, and, and this is a double-headed come a uh, question. You know, everybody watching this right now, and they're like, "Loon, like, we we clearly could no, just press I, play I on, agree with on you. pretty no, much no, any no, rap." No, no, I agree and, with you that there's yeah. a. I agree with you, but I'm trying to connect the message, the messenger, and the integrity of the message. Okay. Because what what I'm saying is, when you go and call out Meek Mill, Rick Ross, and these guys. I want to know what they have said that lends to your um, um, argument. Right. You so, know, because for me, it's like they're not saying smoking on such and such. So I right. don't know if that applies to them. I'm not denying that the culture has a level of that in it and it right. needs to be addressed. That's 100 percent right. fact. I'm saying it does. I don't know if it lives in where you are attacking, which is the mainstream industry. Yeah. I don't know if it lives there. Well, at this point, the, the convo with me and those three brothers, that was a few months ago. I'm honestly like tired of um, people framing that convo as if I have a personal issue with any of them brothers, because I absolutely don't. And I, and I mean that from a sincere place. If you like, affect someone's business, do you not understand how they can, they can be an issue? Bro, me and Jim Jones been texting with each other. It's all love at no, this point. No, but I'm saying, shout out to Jimmy. Right. I'm saying, for future reference, do you understand that affecting someone's business is an issue? So, oh, do I understand that that's an issue? Yeah. Of course I can. You can't, can't I don't care how much you, you are righteous, you can't make that not an issue. If I say, damn, home just f f with my business, talking about I shouldn't be talking about what I'm talking about. Like, people can take it that way. And yeah. what I saw at Jim Jones, highly upset when he responded. Do I do more in one month for people than he'll ever do in, the, in his whole life. Mm-hmm. You heard? Yeah. Like, mm. I, I really I really give back to the people. I don't care about none of the rhetoric he talking about. I grew up in the church. You're not going to do none of that to me. But I really, 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 really do a lot yeah. for the people. Mm -hmm. he, he talked about lyrics. I don't care about none of that. Okay. In real <laughs> life, in a real life, I do a lot for the people. Mm -hmm. Now, let's line up to the statistics. Mm -hmm. You talking or you doing? Mm-hmm. You heard? You talk a good one. What have you done? Yeah. You did? Yeah. You know what I mean? People I watch get killed that, that I, I grew up as my friends and things like that. I don't get scared straight. 
I stand up stronger and fight for my people and do for my people every single day. Mm -hmm. Miss me with the rhetoric about what I do in my music. I get money off my music. Don't tell me how to make my dollars. But what I do for the people, yeah. from my heart, mm -hmm. can't nobody tell me about. So it right. seemed like, damn, bro, you don't know what I'm going through. Like, how you going to just... Yeah, so, um, I, now I feel you. Well, hopefully this interview, you right. know what I mean, because of... Cause of because of who's tuning into you, right. which I really respect, and me and you building off camera, right. I'm like, oh, this is a blessing from God that we that that, that we gonna have this type of convo because um, I don't want my heart to be misconstrued. Right. You know what I mean? And I don't, I actually don't think that it is misconstrued. I know people that I'm one call away from all all of them, yeah. and and I, I I'm I'm on the line directly with Jim yeah. at this point, but um, one call away from them brothers, and I look forward to it because I am putting morals over money and anybody that's not putting morals over money then we have become victims to what this industry wants to turn us into which is saying man we just gonna get them some crumbs you know get them some popularity get them some bread and incentivize them to participate in glorifying the lowest level of who they really are because it's crazy that we don't see the smoke and mirrors that this industry does not care about us. The industry cares about profits over everything. Damn Dash always talks about culture vultures, right? And that is spot on, bro. There are real culture vultures. But then what do we call it when we are the ones at this point? Not people from outside the culture that's sitting here trying to take advantage of us, but when we're the ones who know what's going on, we see the play, but we still participating in the play because it's like, man, it's just a business move. I'm just rapping. Well, it's beneficial behavior the same way you was quiet in that studio. But what about when you're not an unknown local rapper that's 21 years old no more and when you're a person that's up? You got millions upon millions upon millions and you older now and you know better. All I'm saying is at that point, like, we got to do better. You know in real life, brother, in real life, you know that, like, you get a more severe um, uh, sentence and punishment if you did something intentionally. You know there's a difference between uh, first degree and second degree murder. So right. if, if you plotted on this and you knew what you was going to do and you, and you went out there and did that, that's way more severe than, oh, it just popped off in a moment. You ain't think it was going to happen. It might have been self-defense. Whoop -whoop. We're going to give you that. We might give you manslaughter. Right. Apply that to the rap game. When you know better, at some point you got to do better. And but how do you do better is becomes the question. And that's what I think we're viewing. Like people do have ability to transition and it takes time. We see Jay-Z, um, you know, as a case study of someone that used to rap about pure D drug dealing. And now he's in a scenario to say, yo, own land, see how the Jews did it. That's how you do it. And trying to put those messages in rap. But that is a high level skill set. That's not just like going in and rapping cat in the hat. That is a different skill set to be able to take your trauma, extract the lessons from it, not, not glorify the trauma, but still speak on the lesson. Like that, that's a different kind of skill set that I'm not sure that everyone has, brother. You're not sure that everyone has it. Well, if you got the skill set to be able to glorify some stuff that you ain't do, and lie about it, then you should have the skill set to be able to glorify the way you actually live in. I'm asking that we just have integrity and tell the truth. That's it, bro. Like, that's it. What if my truth is I see murders and somebody trying to kill me, then, and if I see them, I will kill them. Then, then, then we need people to talk about, I have talked about, once again, I gotta put you on that D1. I have talked about my student getting murdered by another one of my students, you heard me? I have talked about my best friend getting murdered. I have talked about- So what about makes it different when you talk about murder and then they talk about murder? Because when I am giving commentary on stuff that's going on around me, that's different from in first person saying that I am gonna catch you here and kill you. I'm doing this. This is what me and my partners do. I'm about to pay a little young, one of my youngins to come and kill you, da da da. That's different, bro. And Kids are not dumb. So, so here's the other thing. If we want to play dumb as adults, we could do it and we could tap dance around this. I'm but trying to get you to give me specific. I'm trying to do the opposite of playing dumb and say it head on that this, this is a song that struck me, that got me. All right, check yeah. this out. Right, let, let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Um, I asked you your top five. You said Lil Baby. 
I don't know why you ain't put D1 in there, but we'll get to that. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm about to spit for you in a second. Yes, maybe facts, I, maybe facts. I get on that list. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, for sure. I give you my top five. This is my unadulterated. I'm not fronting for the cameras. You Future's know. in my top five, too. Future's in Future's your top five. Future's in my top five. This, this, we'll get to Future because I'm sure you got some things to. I was just going, I, you know, I'm about to turn <laughs> it on you. Like, oh, okay. Oh, really? So you aware of the interview Nicki Minaj did with Joe Budden? To where she said she was in the, fut- in, in the studio with Future. And she was mad at him because Future looked at her and said, Nikki, it's crazy that people think I do all these hard drugs and everything just because I be rapping about, you know, doing them. But in real life, I'm a lightweight. I don't do that stuff. And Nikki was like, yo, I'm paraphrasing. Yo, like, basically, that's messed up, bro. And you should be ashamed of yourself because a lot of people are thinking that you do this and they have started doing drugs because of that. You ain't hear what Juice World said? Juice World died of a, you know how Juice World died? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he ain't get shot. Overdose, Overdose. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know who he said inspired him to start doing drugs? Go ahead, see, you Future. Just, there you go. But, but he, here's go. the, and let's deal with these separate. And, and it's different if, if it's like, if, if Future is like, yo, but I'm really living like that. But Future is telling me. Well, well let's, deal, let's deal with them separately, because again, context is important. Where I come from, and I'm not bailing future out by any means, but I want to understand and give and just give some commentary as to what could be happening in this scenario. All right. When we deal with Nicki Minaj, number one, as a dude, and me and Nicki Minaj are not dating or not nothing. She married. Y'all better not be dating. Yeah. So, yeah. so what I look like telling her I'm on all these drugs if I am on them? It, it's my job to tell her. I don't really get out like that. Like, oh, nah, them niggas tripping. I don't really get on like that. Come on, Lord, brother. Bro, you gonna tell me that niggas ain't saying that to women? Come on, bro. But but like you said, if they not dating, and then, then it's like, also, this is my friend. This is my collaborator. We're in the studio. So why she want to know my together. business that I'm strung out on Lord tabs and shit? I ain't telling her that. If I'm strung out on lean and all this, this nigga, I ain't telling her that. Nah, I don't get on like that. I really don't get on like that, baby. It ain't really like that. Like, how, how y'all know it ain't that? But why would you not want to tell a person in a one-on-one setting when you're telling millions of people in your music that that's what you do? Well, because, I don't know. That's a good question. There we go. Oh, a point for D1. If y'all, if y'all keep a score at home. That's a good me? question. But, but, but if that's, I could say that if you're putting it in your music and you don't want to, because, I mean, I, uh, that's a good one. He stomped me with that one, Future. I got another one for, oh, and by the way, shout out to Future. Yeah, my my man Future. Orlando uh, used to manage Future, and Orlando used to manage me. Like, one time I went to a car show in Shreveport and opened up for Future at, at the concert. We never have built one-on-one. But what I'm not finna do, brother, and I hope that you'll be on my team when I say this, is in this dark world where people love, I love T.I. song, My Life, Your Entertainment. I think that was on his Paper Trail album. Right. And just that title, I love it because I see it now that I'm not finna let this world that just simply wants to be entertained by who beefing with who and who got locked up today and who got shot. I'm not finna let them cast me off as, oh, he's the rapper hater at all. When I'm a dude who out here writing children's books, you heard me? David found his slingshot, anti-bullying hip hop children's book. This is a hip hop book, but it's a true story about me being a kindergartner and getting bullied in New Orleans, how I overcame that by tapping into my God-given gifts. Here's a question. What's up? If Meek Mill went on an interview tomorrow and said, D1, I know you got your children's book, but we can do better, bro. Mm-hmm. Like you rapping and shit, you shouldn't even be doing the rap thing. That's the devil playground. We can do better. Spend all your time on re- writing books. Spend all your time in those schools, in those communities. Get out of this club. It's like a in a club with the Bible, right? You respect that and, and, and you got a lot of respect for that. But brother, it might be the wrong place to be in here. That's exactly talk. where I need to be, man. What right, you tell mean? Tell me why. Why? Because in Mark chapter two, Verse 13, it says, Jesus calls Levi, a.k.a. Matthew. Then Jesus went out to the lake shore again, you heard me? And he taught the crowds that were coming to him. As he walked along, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax collector's booth. 
Follow me and be my disciple. That's what he told Levi. Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with buku tax collectors and other disreputable sinners, a.k.a. what you might think is going on in the club, right? There were many people of this kind amongst Jesus' followers. But when the teachers of religious law saw um, who, who the Pharisees were and they saw him eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with such scum and people like that? When Jesus heard this, he told them, healthy people don't need a doctor, loon. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. That's why I need to be in the club with it. That's why I need to be a rapper. But that's Jesus. You ain't Jesus, man. That's who I'm striving to be like, though. What you think this bracelet stand for? Yeah, no. What would I, Jesus do? Yeah, you wanna, we wanna, we do wanna adopt the 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 the, the uh, teachings and things like that. But to put D1 in that place is a stretch for me. Okay, because why? Because you know and like, boy, you just D1. You just the, the dude who I just right okay, now. What happened. what do you That's say? Why. Right. But do we all not have the spirit of God in us? Yes. So with that being said, we are supposed to be working to let the spirit of God overtake and out wrestle the spirit of the world. But you know, this is what it's, this is what becomes, I won't say unfair, but this is what becomes interesting when someone has to go against you. What, what would you say to people who say you weaponize the word? That I weaponize the word? It would be different if I was like, I'm not going to associate with people because I feel like I'm better than them. man. I got the opposite happening to me, Loon. I got the church asking me why I'm doing your show. You heard me? So anybody that sound weaponizing the word, man, you just did a Wikipedia search. You clearly don't know nothing about D1 being on tour with Young Dro and Killer Mike, uh, D1 collaborating with Starlito, with Juvenile, with Manny Fresh, with Big Crit, with Lupe Fiasco, and got the other Christians, you heard me, looking at me like, man, what he doing? He trying to fit in? Or oh, he just trying to... And that's the thing, dog. It's like, God, man, I, I shouldn't be doing nothing else with my life except what I'm doing right now because I see a light that I have. I see an industry where there's so much potential, but there's also a lot of darkness in the industry. Not because we dark people, but because the industry inherently is dark, man. A dude tried to get me to do, I said this in the interview, do some homosexual stuff before to be my manager. What? Yes. Yes. This, but once again, this when I'm a local dude that's, begging for somebody to put yeah. me on not realizing that man i go through god i don't go through gatekeepers so that's what i mean so clearly you were in a position where you you i won't say desperate but you wanted yeah. in yeah close to being desperate. yeah you wanted i want in. in i want in yeah what i gotta do yeah so so that's why you would get pushback from someone like a joe button that'll say yo seem like he's clout chasing and that's the part where i'm like uh and once again Lord, help me, bro. Help me because yeah. you, you do this. Like, are we in a space nowadays to where can you say somebody's name in an interview without it all of a sudden seeming like, well, since you said this person's name, that means that you got an issue with them? I can't. I'm, I'm going to say what I want to say and, and what right. go with that. Because what happens yeah. is you can't control the internet. Let them think what they want. That's I stand firm and think about what I'm saying. I give it to you and that, I leave it that, there. That's a bet. That's yeah. a bet. And I'm just saying that because. Yeah. It's me, ugly out there, though. Yeah, yeah. bro. It is, it's ugly, bro. So since you brought up uh, Joe Budden's name, once again, I feel like I got to clarify everything and say, just for the record. And Joe, I won't do that. I but I respect you. you doing that because yeah. people, I know I know when someone sees this clip or interview, you don't, you don't want wanted to be perceived that way but At what I would all. tell you is if they're coming with that notion nothing you can say can change that notion okay thank defending you. yourself just by responding or defending yourself places you in that uncomfortable situation thank you sir thank you I needed that yeah I needed to hear that from you so now I feel comfortable saying this when Joe Budden first brought my name up on his podcast um they called me a podcaster from New Orleans, right? <laughs> Who's clout chasing and trying to get on by naming other rappers. That's no journalistic integrity. That is like, man, that's, 
that's, you just exposed yourself. You heard me? No journalistic integrity to see that this man got 11 albums out. This man toured with and performed with people who you call some of the goats of the rap game. He got them on his songs. You know what I'm saying? Going ball for ball with them on his songs. Like not seeing this, that all these people around you who you know in the industry, these people know me. Not seeing that I'm actually a, a fan of you when you was rapping. But to try to cast it off as this a clout chaser because I ain't heard of him and he named other people's name. Not realizing, bro, I done named way bigger people before. My first song was called- But does that make his argument? Does that- That, that, makes, you've, been, that you've been naming people? No, it makes his argument invalid to say that I am simply clout chasing, to not know, man, this dude got a well-documented right. story of being a middle school teacher. That's a real journey he's on. A real journey he's but been on. But you can throw clout chasing into the journey. Like, I can't, I, I'm not gonna act like that you can, you can't throw clout oh, chasing that, in that it with. can't be a part of yeah, it. Yeah, like, it can be a part so, of so it. So it's a difference between it being a part of your journey and being indicative Ooh. of your character. Arr. Yeah. That's all y'all got to say about me, man? Yeah. When, when you bring me up, man? Like, like seriously? Yeah. When everybody on your show around you, and I love that. Shout out to Ish. Shout out to uh, 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 Melissa. Shout out to everybody who was like, nah. This ain't cloud chasing. See, though. this happens nah. with them, right? When up on Joe Budden, I think if you're not from up, something's weird going on where they downplay anybody. Like I came in, helped me clean a million dollars up as soon as I came in the game. And so when they first mentioned me, it's like, oh, some dude that nobody knows. It's like, have, did y'all, y'all do know who I am, don't you? Oh, they talked about you? Yeah, I'm like, y'all cannot have did any research to say that I'm just some guy. I mean, this was before, now they, they say my name or whatever, but there was a time where they just downplay anybody but them. And that's a weird energy for me. Men deal with information, not emotion. And that's clearly emotional because you don't know who someone is to say they're a nobody or they're a podcaster trying to get on. I don't really um, appreciate that. Yeah, so I think the point I was making ultimately with that was when we see what's going on, we have to ask ourselves, the consumers, oh, back to my college class yeah, that no, I teach. No, how did you and Joe get into it? That's what you was talking about. He brought my name up on, on, about, on his oh, podcast. Oh, about, the, about the, the, the Jim Jones meet me up. Yeah, he brought my okay. name up uh, on his podcast. So then he brought my name up, and with that being said, I simply responded. And I, I responded. Once I responded, bro, I got hundreds of thousands of fans right, all followers. over this country. Yeah. Bro, I've been touring for the last 14 years. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when I do a public post responding to, to how he tried to reference me and cast me down as just, he just some random little clout chasing dude, my fans went in and that, and, and, ooh, and, 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 that, and, that, and, that, and that, and that tickled him. Well, he ain't like to be tickled. Yeah. That, that, that got him. So now bring my name up again, episode number two, bring it up and get all of your fans out of my comments Good. and your, your Christian <laughs> rap fans and, right. and, and your Christians, get them out of my, my comments, da da da, your Christian army this and, and, and all your, mad, uh-oh. It's like, why are you so bothered, my brother? Like, and then his people on the show was like, Joe, you know you brought D1's name up, right? Like D1 wasn't right. even talking to you, right? I, I don't care, I don't care, it doesn't matter, da da da, get them away from me, cool. Yeah, he plays you with this, I don't want nothing to do with this, he's, ooh, he's a type nuisance. of energy, like little bitty he's boy a, type he's energy. A nuisance. Yeah. yeah, and he's trying to get on by saying, yeah. by saying my name now. Yeah. Now he's throwing me into the mix. Yeah. I'm going to keep it humble right now. I'm, I'm going to keep it humble on a lot of levels. On a lot of levels where, right. yeah, I'm going to keep it humble. Um, with that being said, I responded again because what's not going to happen is I'm not going to get bullied by someone who feels like, well, I have a bigger platform than you. I am just going to talk down on you. Man, I literally got a book that's about not getting bullied and how to overcome it, right? It's, and I, I wrote this for kids. This is a children's book, bro, that's teaching them how to interact with one another, even though they may have differences. Me and this dude on the cover who used to bully me, man, all these years later, we best friends, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? We best friends. So, so that's why I'm looking forward to Dog, I can't wait to hug Joe Budden, bro. I can't wait to dap him off and tell him, bro, my favorite song from you is uh, Follow My Lead and 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 da da Why da. do you want to hug these dudes, man? Because, bro. Teach me this, because I yeah. don't have this. I yeah. don't have this. That, there we go, brother. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your, your humility, because you got some life experiences I don't have. Right. And, and I got a worldview and probably some experiences yeah. you don't have. So 
because I'm not striving to be like my favorite rapper or be like who got the most money in the culture, I'm striving to be like Jesus Christ. Because of that, I'm looking at a man who watched them sit here and lie on him and crucify him and hang him on the cross. And when he hanging alone, he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Man, I got goosebumps right now saying that, bro. That's the type of example to where in the word, it calls us to pray for and love our enemies. It calls us to help those in need. It calls us to turn the other cheek. And turning the other cheek don't mean that you ain't got nothing to say. You know what I'm saying? But turning the other cheek is just like, man, if I'm asking for forgiveness from God constantly, then who am I to tell somebody that I can't forgive them? So when I see things in the culture that's contrary to the kingdom culture, I'm just like, which one I'm choosing, kingdom culture or rap culture? Man, I love rap culture, but I got to roll with this. So that's why amidst all this, I have seen myself as a symbol for how other people can handle stuff in a way where it's like, you're not going to bully me. I'm not, I'm not finna back down, but I'm going to show you all how we can come full circle to where I do want to dab Joe Budden off and, and sit down here. Oh, and at one time, you know, he thought this is all applause so this dude could get on my show or whatever. Man, I ain't got to come on your show. Waka Flocka, you heard me? Shout out to Waka, my brother Waka Flocka. Waka Flocka put an Instagram post up and was like, Joe, you tripping at this point. Like, you need to just bring D on the show and y'all need to talk it out. Da, da, da. Like, like, but... See, that's what, that's, that's when he, and, and I'm going to be honest, when he hear you say that, right, that's when I say, fuck, because when, when I went on Brilliant Idiots and said what I said about academics, Andrew Show said, man, can I put you on the phone with that? Can I get you guys in a room? Can I get you guys to talk? Charlemagne is my brother. I can get Charlemagne to get him somewhere if I need him, right? Like, they, they was like, yo, man, can we get y'all in the room? Like, no, it's what for what? You said I, no? For what? Because you're a street dude. Yeah, and then the ideologies, bro, is just like, no, I can, I'm busy saving lives of dudes that think my, like, my way of thinking. I don't have time to try to wrestle with a grown man to make him think different. I'll put some game next to the lame shit they're doing, right? And keep it moving. So... What I would say to you is that what do you say to people who say D1 is doing a lot of self-serving things? Because if you have an issue with what the rap culture is doing, give the solution to the rap culture, not to the individuals like I need to meet with Meek or I need to meet with Ross or I need to meet with Joe. Because when I hear when I think Joe hears that part, that's what says clout chasing to him when it's like, yo, Joe, sada, 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 but we should just talk it out. Or oh, I can't wait to see them gentlemen and for us to have a dinner. Cause that's what you said at the end of that, is that like I would love to sit down with y'all. For what? Bro, because communication is the the key to You're growth. communicating. You in public, so hey, listen, if I say, listen, they the building down there on fire, like instead of stopping and getting some water or telling them, send the ambulance down to somebody dead or, or sending resources or sending a plan of action, you know, marching orders, I don't want to say, yo, send them people to come talk to me because talking to me does what for those kids that's still listening to that music? It does a lot when I can shift your mindset because of a conversation. And I'm not talking about me shifting the artist mindset. I'm talking about as a human being, like neither one of us is gonna be the same after this conversation. Right. Cause now our textures have, have overlapped. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be big or small, there's gonna be a difference because of what we've been exposed to. So my thing is like when, when, when we relying upon, man, um, well, this another person and because our paths ain't naturally crossed, then we just not, because we on two different types of time, maybe, we just not supposed to ever communicate. It's like, nah, man, you know what this culture suffer from the most, which is yes men. It suffer from people that's around somebody that's thinking, I don't agree with what this person doing, but they paying me. And beneficial they, behavior. Beneficial behavior. And who better to be able to talk than two people who don't need each other? That's why this convo is doing what it's doing right now. Right. You a boss without me, yeah. you heard me? I'm yeah. a made man without Facts. you, you feel me? Facts. But when we come together and we like, oh yeah. yeah. We, we have no, like I don't have to agree with everything you yeah, say. Yeah, but if you affect my business, we can't do this, right? If you come out on the platform and say something about me that 
deters any one person from viewing my stuff or looking at it away, that severs our relationship because we're in a business. And I think that's a street mentality. I think that, uh, I think that a, a kingdom mentality is, you know what? It took for this to happen to maybe open my eyes up to something that I wouldn't have received. You, but in you, any you other don't way. understand certain things. I, have you ever sold drugs? No. Yeah, right. yeah, I sold drugs. No, I mean yeah. like really. Yeah, I sold drugs. Well, I'm, I'm a rapper, so I, I get to lie like. Nah, nah. Hey, see, I sold nah, drugs. I'm talking about. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, so I'm have you been close you. enough to drug selling though? No, I, I've been close enough to drug selling, brother. Yes. Like in real, like no, stop trolling. No, my, no, I'm, I'm not trolling. Okay, cool, 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 no. cool. <laughs> I don't no. know where you yeah. trolling. Okay. No, my, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, my college roommate started selling drugs. Okay, you feel me? Um, when we first got to LSU and. Yeah, I, I how just, how close have you? Would you say you've been to street to the streets to the street? Not to teaching the kid. I'm talking about you yourself waking up in the morning. Like I'm doing, maybe going to a trap house, or I'm going to. I live in the trap house, or yeah. I live in the ghetto. So I live in the goose. You heard me? I'm from the goose in New Orleans. That's a part of the East. You heard me? Anybody who knows and understands New Orleans East currently, currently is a is a war zone. But unfortunately, even when I was growing up, it was like, oh, that's Mr. Lloyd House across the street. And right next door to it, that's a well-known, that's before it was even called the trap. In New Orleans, we wasn't calling it the right. trap. That's a crack house. Right. That's well-known. And I'm plugged in New Orleans, too. So, Word. yeah, I got yeah. a lot of so, people. So, the East, the friend. Gooch, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, all this, this is well-known. So, me being in proximity to this stuff, I didn't grow up in no gated community, man. You feel me? Yeah, but if you ain't hustle, it's a difference. You don't really know the texture of what a person's been through. Right, like if you ain't had to feed Joe, you said you had great parents. Yeah. Right, if you ain't had to go outdoors and say we ain't really ate in five days, and the big homie right there got a pack, and I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they hiring up. All I gotta do is go file the application, but the big homie willing to give me something. Now I'm hustling. Now I'm in the car with him every day by way of feeding my family. Mm -hmm. Not because I want to ride and do dumb shit, but the big homie got a pack. He might be into some beef, but I end up in the car because mama and them ain't ate in four days. Mm -hmm. This turns into a lifestyle. Now I pick up some of the habits, right? So I'm saying that sometimes the environment projects behaviors on you. Absolutely, absolutely. And so I, when yeah. these rappers are talking like some of these things, it's, it, I, I take it to be some of that. Yeah, you know? no, no, I, I do too, bro, I do too. Except, and I wanna know how much you understand of it to say that man, bro, yeah. it's glorification or narration. Yeah, oh no, I understand it to the fullest, bro. I understand it. I've seen it from all angles, from the people who had no other options. So tell me, mind. because I'm big time dope boy mm -hmm. in this town. All right. Talk to me about the drug game and your understanding. So, so I can know for me and the trap niggas that's looking to say when D1 talk to you rap niggas, pay attention. Because he ain't talking like a dude that don't know what it's like to and mom ain't ate. Right. To have to feed their family. To have to share the stove with somebody that killed their brother. And, and had a kind of level head to duck and dodge all day. Like just all of this beefing and problems and turmoil that you go through as you try to make money that's what i'm saying bro you're describing my whole upbringing bro. okay and you're talking to the dude that was equivalent to like how kendrick said good kid mad city mm. i was the dude who is like you growing up around all this and you literally see the fruit of that lifestyle in what happened to your best friend and what route he took with his life. What happened to a lot of the dudes you played at Digby Park with, you heard me, played park ball with. What happened to a lot of these people who just grew up on your same block, but how did it turn out different from you? So I recognized that I was an anomaly from early on. Like, dang, this is crazy to me that I gotta go to school 30 minutes away from my crib, all the way to the other side of the town, I'm not going to the school that's two blocks from my house and three blocks from my house because my parents recognize we're going to camp out. See, even that privilege, that's privilege. I recognize So it. that's what I'm saying. That's a, even just that right. provides a disconnect. But, but even that is privilege, to be able for your mother and father to choose, bros, where I grew up at. You don't even got that. They don't even got a car. The mother, they ain't had a car in generations. Yeah. So everybody's walking to school. You don't have a choice to say, yo, man, damn, it's better over there. So go over there. Yeah. Like, and I'm saying. I've been to the, you ain't been to the real hood, bro. Who? You. 
Tripping. You man. ain't been to the real hood. You tripping. You ain't, bro. You have not been to the real hood. Everything you, you describe. You talking about Africa and all that? Everything you describing, bro. You talking about this. Bro, at 13 years old, I went to Ghana. I knew you was talking about that. Yeah. You ain't do that, though. No, not at 13. So because yeah. you ain't do that, you ain't see what I seen to where I'm thinking. But oh, you yeah, wasn't we got part of it. Because the lights was off some days. You heard me? At, yeah. at my crib. The lights was off some days. Sometimes we had to eat mayonnaise sandwiches, all that type of stuff. You heard me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Oh, we ain't got it. Oh, I can't get the jabos like all my friends. Like da da da. All right, cool. See, that's lightweight shit. That's that ain't lightweight. that ain't the environment that's birthing these rappers and that mentality that you that you condemn. But them. that mentality, bro, that's something to where I done seen worse, and I done seen people with a better mentality. And it's because yeah, that mentality that's true. wasn't something that was glorified or put on a pedestal. Nowadays, hip hop culture has made it to where. As a black person, I teach students in class who are like, Professor D1, I'm a black person, I'm not really from the trenches, but I listen to a lot of that music because I don't feel like I'm real, quote unquote. I feel like my black card would get revoked if I'm not at least listening to or in proximity to this culture of drugs, violence, and all this type of behavior. Give me that water. And that's crazy that that has become like, this whole concept of black card revoked, bro. Yeah. And and black card revoked. Yeah. It, Especially it, for some of that dumb shit. Come yeah. on, man. So so that's what I'm saying. And bro. I want you to know too, and people watching for whatever reason, if they're new here, I'm also someone that's critical of rappers, right? But from a different perspective, I tell what them to be more resourceful, be more um, forthcoming with information be more interested in information because I believe rappers, and this is my gripe with them, and I don't have any interest to rap, right? I can probably go get a deal right now with P, that's my brother. I can probably say, y'all wanna put an album out. Coach K and them will give me a deal today. Baby, my brother, I can probably, right? But I don't fuck with rap, I don't wanna rap. Um, so I have no incentive on, on speaking of these things, right? Um, I tell them a lot of rappers are spend their entire career chasing a lifestyle and not make no money. So I want them to be in the moment, strike while the iron is hot, put more irons in the fire, get information from the label when they're hot, maybe even threaten a stoppage of work if the contracts ain't right. Like get, get what you can really get from it. Don't look back in 15 years and say, they took all my money. I also want the guys around the rappers to be more resourceful because I see the culture has a market for people that's hustling pictures. And when I say pictures, it's like, I just run into D1, take a picture, run into TI, take a picture, run into this. And I got a bunch of pictures on Instagram and actually are hustling off that, like getting, selling courses, whatever they're doing, but making money and cachet from that. So I want the friends around rap dudes to not be so cool to where they're not resourceful mm -hmm. to the operation, right? I'm, I'm picking that shit like that. Yeah. Stay away from the streets, right? Yeah. But, you Bo know. Bo Boosie said something dope in the interview. Uh, in regards to, man, if you're going to be around me, add to the opportunities that I'm already getting. M much of this stuff is income, and it's already coming my way. But if you're going to be around me and now you're an extra expense, it'll help if you're adding value. Because if not, you're just taking off of my plate that was already going to be my plate. And the rappers, what I tend to find is, because coming from my environment, that's what I'm saying, bro. I, I give leeway to it. so much trauma, bro. It's so much trauma. Like, now you see me by myself. It's because I'm a cold, hard dealer. Right, and I hate to say that, my mother hates to hear me say that now because I'm successful. But I had to tell my mama, I'm leaving the light on for them dudes behind me. I'm just letting them know you can escape that. I'm leaving the light on, I'm leaving marching orders to say, you don't got to keep hustling, bro. Cause right. I was there too thinking, what do you do with the money? I literally got the money, yeah. but what do I do, right? Now, I, I, I'm, I'm saying that you see me right here today, every rap dude, everyone in the industry right now I tell you, every time I saw Lone Evil by itself, I'm dealing with the trauma and I'm a nigga that read books all day. All day I listen to books and I can't shake it to have six or seven people around me helping me set, I don't got no business in here sweating, putting the camera in the light and all. I don't got no business doing that. But that's my trauma still on my back. You dig? And so these rap guys are dealing with the same level, or if not worse, because they're dealing with a lot of money. So if they're, in my opinion, a lot of times I think they're the mascot of the team, right? Again, some people would try to call them fake and act like they ain't in the streets at all. I'm going to say that they're the mascot of the team, meaning they're not in the game, 
but they're close enough to it to see who, how to score, how to dunk. They seeing what's going yeah. on. Yeah. And so those guys right there don't, they don't have the direction or the leadership of the guys on the court. <laughs> This is why I was upset with academics, or not upset, this is why I had the, the stuff to say about academics is because I believe with commentary, the same way I'm sure you do, you can push people and change people's direction. Mm. So I would believe that some of the commentary and the drama farming coming from my culture pushes some of these mascots on the court. And then they do something like snitch. There you go. And then you say, well, damn, he don't know not to snitch because he ain't he ain't really a part of the coach. Either they the snitch or they catch a case right. that they wasn't prepared they, for. They wasn't prepared to, yes. to, to catch that, but they felt like they had to live up to it. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, bro. So I'm just trying to help get us off the plantation, man. And the plantation looks like us being so desperate for validation that we sit here and say our form of communication, which is rapping and consuming rap, is something that's going to lead to our degradation. You feel mm. me? That's it. Tell me, tell me, tell me, because cause you went through a level of desperation. Yeah. Tell me what makes yours different than what the, the coach is in right now. Thanks for watching this clip from its Up There podcast to see the rest of the interview. Click one of the boxes on the screen. Also join Discord and Patreon to be in our community.